This is a special uh, video. Uh, I've uh, compiled all the tutorials I've done for the Dung Beetle Knife into one shorter video. So this is going to be under 20 minutes and will show you all the techniques that I use to paint the Dung Beetle Knight. So yeah, here I'm, um, I'm working on the uh, shoulder pads. You can see the colors that I'm uh, using in the text boxes. So uh, the important thing is that you use the side of your brush. Uh, this is because you don't want paint to be left into the black uh, recesses because you want to keep those in order to maximize the contrast between the light and the dark spots on the shoulder pad. The paints should be mixed into a layer consistency paint. You don't want it too runny because that will uh, cause it to enter the black recesses. And you don't want it too thick either because that will create a too uh, jarring transition between the color underneath it. So here I'm applying the uh, Uriel Yellow and Pure Orange uh, mix and I'm painting it in a smaller area. This will create uh, a smooth gradient transition between the light and the dark portions of the shoulder pad. For an even brighter uh, look you can mix some white into this mix. Don't go overboard though because it will create, uh, that will cause it to be almost white and you don't want to lose uh, the saturation of the yellow color when doing this. So if uh, any of these portions go a little bit too fast for you, um, I have made individual uh, video tutorials for each of these uh, uh, components that I'm painting on the Dung Beetle Knight. So you can check those out. So now I'm applying the same uh, technique using the side of the brush on the chest piece as well. There are free ways to support me. Uh, if you would like to, you could uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That will cause my uh, my uh, videos to rank higher and get more get more views. Uh, and of course, uh, you can also uh, support me on uh, Patreon. I have different tiers, um, priced at one dollar, two dollar, and three dollars. And uh, for one dollar, uh, everyone can. Uh, send me their progress photos of their painting process, uh, painting your own miniature. And, uh, I may even do that into a video feedback, um, which I have done before. And uh, I will give you pointers as to how you can improve your own uh, painting. My uh, more expensive tiers, the $2 and $3 tiers, offer other rewards, so you should uh, check those out if you're, uh, if you're interested. And of course it will also support me and keep making, uh, keep making uh, good content uh, where you can learn more about painting uh, miniatures. So here I'm putting uh, down uh, some, um, some pink color. If you have a pink color, you can use that. I've used a mix of white and red because I don't own a uh, pink color. Right now it looks uh, horrible. <laughs> truly, truly horrible. But I will add some, uh, some uh, red uh, to uh, so it will look better.
the paint is uh, mixed into a layer uh, consistency. Um, and I'm also smoothing the transition by licking my brush and uh, painting uh, towards the uh, outer recess of, uh, of the highlight or the red color. Um, right now I'm painting the highlight, of course, so I'm doing that there as, as well. Same technique. I lick my brush in order to smoothen the transition between the pink and the, and the highlight. So now I'm painting in some uh, veins. Again, if this is going too fast for you, you can always check out my, uh, my uh, more in-depth tutorial where I cover each component separately and go uh, over more thoroughly uh, each process. You want the veins to be somewhat uh, curvy. Um, don't make straight lines because that will not look like veins. And you can also uh, add, add different amounts of, uh, of white and red into this mixes uh, in order to create a more dynamic look so that not every vein has the same color. You need to be using a brush with a fine tip for, uh, for this. I recommend uh, you use a Kolinsky sable brush and uh, not a synth synthetic brush because uh, those tend to not hold up very well doing work like this. So now I'm uh, painting in some, um, some depth into the veins as well. I'm painting a thin white or off-white line underneath the veins in order to make them a little bit uh, more uh, three, a pair more three-dimensional. Remember to thin all your paints down with water. I never paint uh, straight for the bottle. I always add water, different amounts for different effects, but yeah, always add water. So now we're progressing on to the uh, chest piece. I've uh, mixed my own uh, color. Uh, you can mix uh, black and uh, white uh, for a metal effect, but you also need to add a little bit of uh, blue. Um, or else the metal will appear a little bit flat and dead almost. Like all metals uh, contain different uh, color tints uh, to them, um, depending on the metal type. And adding a little bit of blue will uh, give it a little bit more interest. So now I put down the uh, almost all of the surface with the base color and I started to apply the highlight. The highlight is, uh, is a same mix, only I've added more white into the mix. And also perhaps a little bit of, uh, of uh, blue, more blue to it, in order to not only desaturate the color. So when you're painting uh, highlights, you always want to leave the brush stroke where you want most paint to be left on the model. Because if you were to leave the brush in an area where you want the transition to be smooth, it wouldn't be because most paint would be left there. So the transition will, will not be that smooth. So now I'm darkening up the uh, armor in the uh, areas that I want to be the darkest. I'm using this with a, uh, a model color black mix and, uh, and some um, uh, armor brown from Vallejo. So now I'm doing some edge uh, highlighting. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you use your highlight color and then you paint with the side of your brush uh, which will hit the edge 
don't use the tip of your brush when you're edge uh, highlighting as you will smear paint uh, and it will not look uh, very good. So here I'm uh, starting to paint the eyes. I wanted to give it a sort of like a purple, no, pink, pink or reddish glow to the uh, to the eyes. Uh, for this, you uh, you can use the same color as you used on the veins. Uh, you paint with the base color uh, and carefully uh, pick out the uh, the eyeball. And then you heavily water down that mix uh, with water, uh, so that you create a glaze. Uh, for those that do not know, a glaze is a very thin uh, paint. So you will uh, not create a jarring transition. So here I proceeded to create the base of uh, going to the local playground to pick up some dirt or sand. And here I'm applying PVA glue in various spots on the on a cork base um, and here I'm sealing the uh, the sand after it has dried for about uh, 10 minutes doing this uh, spot uh, here doing this right here is important because uh, it keeps the sand in place so I proceeded to uh, prime the, the bark or the, uh, the cork base uh, with a black primer and now I proceeded to create a, um, a uh, highlight color for uh, some stone effect. It's basically a gray color and I'm using a dry brush uh, for, for this. Using a dry brush for areas like this is very effective because uh, your brush will pick out the details. And here I'm uh, painting in the, the areas where we added the sand with uh, some, uh, with some uh, green color in order to represent uh, grass. I don't own a uh, green color, so uh, I have a <laughs> it's kind of a joke uh, really that I don't own a, <laughs> a green color. Uh, but yeah, I uh, just mixed some aerial yellow and some model color turquoise and some black in order to create this green color. And for the highlight, uh, don't use, um, uh, don't simply add just white because that will only uh, appear desaturated. So I added some white into my green mix and some uh, aerial uh, yellow. And even more aerial yellow here. And uh, perhaps a bit, little, little bit of uh, of white. So when you're dry brushing uh, like this, uh, you gently move your brush uh, over the surface area so that you don't uh, hit too much of the model with paint. So yeah, this is a special uh, special mix um, in order to create a mud-like effect. This is, uh, after all, the dung beetle night. So I wanted to create some, some dung-like uh, surface mud um, on the base because that goes very well with the theme of the model. You can also create blood using this uh, same uh, recipe, you just add uh, less uh, black into the mix. Doing this work can be sort of like intimidating because uh, this is glue so it's hard to go back from it. It's not like you can hit a res reset button, but it's uh, very fulfilling because you get a satisfying effect um, quite quite easily if you use uh, some uh, toothpicks for this. 
the glue sets very fast as well, so you need to work kind of uh, fast. Because the glue sets so fast, you have to keep making the, the mix. So here's the base uh, complete. Pretty happy with the uh, color uh, or the uh, the whole uh, the whole base. Actually, uh, the the mud could could have been a little bit more um, brighter because it's kind of like a dark model, so it's not that easy to see. But if you study it, you can. Uh, definitely find some interest in the lower portions of the, of the model where the, uh, where the mud is. So here I'm edge uh, highlighting. You can almost not see it, but um, because the black gray color is so dark, you almost can't see it when it goes on top of the black primer, but the transition is there. It's just hard to see on the camera. So this is a blue pale gray. This is, uh, this is the highlight color. So yeah, again I'm licking my brush. The, uh, the reason I'm licking my brush and not uh, putting my uh, brush in, in water is because uh, putting your brush in water will tend to leave, uh, get m too much water into the brush, which will uh, not work for this purpose of smoothing the transition. So here I'm applying the highest highlight point in the, uh, in the uh, armor the sides of the edges of the armor. So I'm painting this in a smaller surface area compared to the, uh, the highlight color underneath it, the blue, pale, gray. So we're uh, nearing the end of the video now actually. Uh, remember to hit subscribe um, in order for, for you to keep getting updates uh, on my future content. And if you really like uh, me to support, if you really like my videos and want to support me, you can also um, become one of my uh, patrons. I don't have that many at the moment, so uh, I would really uh, appreciate it. So here are some final pictures. And again, making a content like this would not be possible without the support I'm already getting from my uh, uh, patron supporters.